So here's another handout that you'll have in the projectile motion folder. And this is sort of uh, taking what we just worked on and extending that idea a little bit. So uh, my hunch is, is that note taking on this is probably not as useful as just trying to follow uh, the description here, but do each their own. So that green thing isn't a vector, all right? Because uh, vectors are always straight, uh, but it's indicating the path. And so this would be uh, the flight of something that lands below ground level. So here's the, the thing that gets people a little confused is the range equation, the way it's typically given away in a textbook, always starts off with the ground level problem. Obviously, that blue line for distance or the range is not representing the ground. It's representing how far something went in the horizontal direction. And so something could uh, land below ground level because there's a hole there or the, the ground stopped, you know, it went to a, a valley uh, off the edge of a hill, but still have a horizontal displacement, even though there wasn't one continuous straight line path from the uh, starting point to the ending point at the same level, all right? And uh, we get to cheat. It seems like we're cheating with the right triangle, doesn't it? Because you, your inclination is you're like, well, wait a minute. Didn't your displacement triangle become this? Isn't that your range now? No. Range is horizontal displacement. And what I get to do is treat this as encoding for this interaction that we have with gravity. And I get to add those or subtract them depending on the assumption you make about uh, gravity. So in this handout, I run it uh, both ways. So I'm gonna get rid of this thing here because we're not saying that range is, is that way. And you see here the math I uh, do those sine, cosine, tangent things for uh, when it's a minus h. And you get those things. Uh, what if it lands above ground? I call that plus h. Interesting thing. It really doesn't matter much. We get the same answer. All right. And one way to, th to think about this, why would... this be a plus H? Well, this thing, the half G T squared part, is a down vector. The magnitude of G is a positive 9.8 or 10, the way we'll play with it for a while, but it's directed down. That makes it a minus since it would be a displacement uh, or it's part of a displacement triangle, if I'm shortening that, then I'm adding to it. If it's a negative kind of thing, that'd be a conceptually way, a conceptual way to think about it, all right? Uh, and we'll see how that works out in our, our math in these other uh, elements. Now, some musings about it. I want to compare these two things. And the reason I'm doing this is because it ends up boiling down to the first zeroth law. All right. So let's consider this left hand side when it lands below the horizontal. All right. We're extending the gravity vector in the negative direction. So adding a negative, if you will. You could think of this as adding more uh, 
of the same. That would be one way to, to think about it. And you go through all this rigmarole. And in this case, I'm zeroing in on the time of flight below ground level. This is when it goes off the edge of the cliff, off the edge of the building, those sorts of problems. And I get this relationship. If I have a path that ends above the horizontal and I'm adding H to that gravity part, then we go through this rigmarole and we get a time function for when it lands above ground. So analytically, like I say right here, the numerator in the time below has to be greater because I'm adding here versus subtracting there. So the mathematics of this tells me that the time of flight has to be greater for the object falling uh, through a longer flight path. If it misses the ground, it's going to travel through the air for a longer time. Then if I bust out the cosine function for each one, okay, so we have time above, time below. Then we get these uh, versions of the speed. Now notice here, V naught cosine, that's X. That's the X part. Hopefully you recognize that from both your trig precalc days plus what we saw in the book. X parts of vectors are cosine parts, Y parts are sine parts, all right? So we have the X uh, direction. And realize, too, when we say X, we're talking about the range. The range is the X displacement, the X axis displacement, if you will. So range is a displacement along the X direction, which may or may not be the actual displacement of the object. Books attempt to say things like this, and they do in their own special way. Um, thought I would give a, a specialer way. All right, so we have these statements here. Horizontal speed for the travel below when it misses ground level on the low end, gotta be smaller than path above because of the time of flight relationship. So we go through all of this, and really what I have here is uh, when you look at the range, one way to look at the range equation is it has to be the x speed times time, right? It's a horizontal distance. It's a straight line distance. Distance equals rate times time. First zeroth law. Distance or change in position more correctly equals rate or speed uh, as we would call it times time. So we get something at the end of this that upholds the first zeroth law, which we is is the simplest way to encode for no object can be in two places at the same time, which is the same thing as saying every change in position of an object requires a non-zero change in time. So I warned you that I, as much as possible, I would always try to bring complex things back down to the simple, as well as take simple things up to the complex. So if you think back to that first displacement triangle, I, I'm sorry, right triangle trigonometry, that's pretty simple especially when it's just numbers. But that simple thing kind of mushroomed, right, into something that wasn't so simple, all that algebra and stuff we were looking at. Uh, and then we take that stuff, analyze a thing or two, and come back down to the thing that we started with uh, in the course here with that first zeroth law.
So that's that's a wrap on that one.